this week on a brand new episode of Strong Arm Sports Podcast. The Brooklyn Nets was a part of one of the worst trades in NBA history when they traded for Garnett, Paul Pierce, those guys from Boston and gave Boston all them first round picks. And they still in better shape than the Knicks. Still, and it's true. We supposed to be the losers, but we win it no. They used to laugh at us, now we win it no. They used to tell me never in my lifetime. I guess they wasn't in their right mind. What's going on, folks? Welcome back to another brand new exciting episode of Strong Arm Sports Podcast. The really sports podcast in all the land. True. Bruh, I mean in all the land. True. Making sure you with me, man. We are back Let's to get it. We're back to wrap up the previous week of sports in dramatic fashion. No BS, no sugarcoating, no biases. Only that strong arm truth. If this happens to be the first time you've watched our show here on YouTube, where have you been? You know? But now we happy to have you. And if you're listening on any of our various podcast channels, because we truly are everywhere. Every happy to have you, man, but I'm one half of the show. I go by the name of K Spade the Prospect. And I'm your boy LaParis57, and together we form Strong Arm Sports. Spade! Yes, sir. Spade, I'm gonna I'm gonna start the show a little different this week. Yeah, I know. It's that type of show. Listen, we usually start in the NBA or the NFL or somewhere between those two sports, but I wanna go I wanna go somewhere else today. You good with that? I think. <laughs> yeah, it's that type of show. Listen, I'm going to start somewhere else today, man. Listen, Spade, it's been a lot of things going on in this sport, man. Me and you have been very critical of this sport. And I'm talking about boxing. If you guys didn't know, last week, Adrian Bronner. And people people was in the comment section like, wow, you guys ain't talking about the AB pack fight. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't even going to mention that. So we just, me and Spade, what we... Let me tell you what we do on this show. We don't talk about everything like all these other various sports outlets. Like, we're not going to mention Jamal Adams tackling the damn mascot. We done seen Spade. Well, me and you, we've been around. We was. You, you said, say it again? I was hoping we was going to talk about that. I'm sorry. Nah, Spade, That's, we don't do that because they, they make a big deal. They make a mountain out of Mount Hill, Spade. We done been around the block a few times. We done seen Charles Buckley messing with the gorilla for umpteenth years. That's we done facts. seen it. We and done seen it. So, for real. So, we done seen it. But we've been very critical about this sport, the sport of boxing. I, I, Spade, I've been critical of boxing. It was like, man, boxing, boxing has fell off. It's trash. And I was like, I was going over to the UFC. And, Spade, I've been critical of UFC the past couple ty- times on this show. We talked it, and I said, it is turning into wrestling. It's turning into WWE. It's, it's very... Is with the gimmicks and all that. It ain't used to be like that before. It was just about the fights. Now it's very with the with the games. It's, I, I'm when it, when it turns into the games, I'm out. Spade, right? Adrian Braun for Pacquiao, man, and everybody was saying AB was talking big smack before the fight, yeah, as before. usual, as right. as usual, talking big smack before the fight, and then Pacquiao yeah. just being Pacquiao wasn't saying too much. Just came near to work. And A.B., you know, the way A.B. was talking, man, we thought, well, I don't want to say we, people thought A.B., A.B. was about that action, boss. And Spade, the fight didn't turn out how a lot of people thought. People bet money, 50 Cent bet yeah. money, uh, a, a few rappers bet money on A.B., and they lost. Manny Pacquiao yeah. came in there and with his business. And, and they both made made some bread. I think Matt Pacquiao might have made ten million, and AB made two point five million. Spade, yeah. your thoughts on the your give me your thoughts about this fight, the state of boxing. Am I tripping saying boxing is trash? Like, let me know. Uh it's a lot to unpack right here. Let me back up. Let me back up. First of all, okay. I've been off the Adrian Brunner hype train. I actually tweeted okay. that. I've been okay. off the Adrian Brunner hype train. When he first came around, we was like, we like this dude. He's funny. He's charismatic. He can fight. Right. Could be the next Floyd. That's how he started. Like, he had that Brandon when he first started. And then briefly, right. him and Floyd had some type of relationship where they coexisted around each other. So that led into it even more. It wasn't long after that I started to realize the big difference between Floyd and A.B. Floyd talked that shit, and then Floyd go walk that shit. A.B. talked that shit, and sometimes walked that shit. All right? And that's a big difference. A lot of people watch Floyd fights because they want to see Floyd lose. Like, it's Floyd fans, 
And then the reason why he's so good at what he is, he's as good of a hero as he is an antagonist. People tune in because they hate Floyd. And he know that. He know he hate it. He know people want to see him lose. And because of that, I feel like he's always on point. He's always ready for whatever fight. You can't say the same thing for A.B. And A.B. love acting like he the victim. Oh, you, everybody just against me. You already talking like you against me. No, ain't nobody against you, bruh. We just know you just talking that shit. At this point, right. man, I feel like A.B. is the boxing equivalent to Plies. And that's really disrespectful to Plies because Plies is still dropping a hit record here and there. But Plies, mm. after his music career started to taper off, he became like an Instagram comedian. A.B. just a comedian at this point, man. He's just a comedian. He talk all that smack, talk all that shit, and get up there and get that work. I got some numbers from this fight that I thought you would want to hear, man. Peep game. Okay. Man, first of all, anybody who's ever watched boxing know they tell you usually if it's a fight where like neither fighter is beat up, they give it to the guy who control the fight more. Control the fight means you was a little more active. You threw more punches. You landed more punches. You control the fight. Manny attempted 48% more punches than A.B. He landed mm. 62 more than his opponent. Pacquiao mm. connected on 44 more body shots. And mm. A.B. was only credited with three body shots the entire 12-round fight. Jeez. Three body shots the entire 12-round fight. Every round, he landed single-digit punches. And after the fight, instead of being like, I got caught slipping, he jumped right into character. I beat that boy. Everybody know I beat that boy. I brought the whole hood. I beat that boy. Man, look. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't pay. I ain't pay for that one. And look, as you know, you and I, man, we don't really pay for pay-per-view fights like that unless it's something that we really, like, this is going to be worth the price of admission. Word. Man, I'm not even going to say I expected Manny to win. I just ain't. I, I don't have any faith in AB the fighter. Adrian Brunner hasn't won a fight in two years, people. His last win was February of 2017. He ain't won a fight in two years. He's had two losses and a draw since then. I mean, I don't, I don't get the hype, bro. I don't get the hype. And if you can go out there and get your ass whooped and still walk home with a couple million, damn near three million, maybe even more after they count up the pay-per-views, I, I I guess he's... You know, I was I was very grateful for Adrian Bronner on, you know, on Twitter. And people was like, oh, well... Adrian Barney keep getting them big fights because, you know, he's able to talk the fight up. And I'm it's like, the antics. that That's may fair. be true. That may be true. People, people cannot stand Floyd. But one thing you have to respect about Floyd Mayweather Jr. is he do not shortcut working out. That dude, mm -mm. that dude works hard. Regardless how you feel about him. Oh, he been to jail. This off the, this when he's out the ring happening. All this yada yada yada. Yep. That yep. man works hard at his craft, and you cannot deny that. You cannot deny that. Sure can. And I don't feel that way about Adrian Bronner. I don't feel like Adrian Bronner is the hardest working, working boxer in 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 the room. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't feel like. I old ass Pac. How old you? Do you know how old Pacquiao was? He got to be in his forties, right? Uh, I'll look it up. But I old know he's in his forties. Pacquiao. 40s. I, the way Manny Pacquiao was throwing those punches, it looked like, I mean, it didn't have the power that it used to have with Manny, but the way he was throwing them, I mean, it, it looked like vintage Pacquiao. And let me tell you something, Spade, I think, we, I think we're spoiled. I mean, we grew up with, with fighters like, you know, Hagler, Hearns, Tyson. I mean, even Lennox Lewis, like, we grew up with these guys. So when, this is when boxing, to me, was at its purest. Like, these fights. Spade, do you remember those Gotti and Ward fights? They used to be Hell flat yeah. out wars. Yep. They used to be wars. And I mean, I people want people want to tell me, oh, I, I wrote on Twitter, boxing is trash now. And somebody wrote responded to me and said, oh, well then you ain't watching. Well, tell me where to look, y'all, because the big fight last month or maybe two months ago was Fury and um, what's my man name, Spade? Um, uh. uh to this day, I can't even remember his name. Deontay Wilder. Wilder. It was Fury and Wilder. Brain fart. I, I mean, I, 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 I didn't buy the fight, but I watched the fight, and I was like, people telling me this is the big fight people wanted to see. I don't see it. I don't see it. If, if any, I mean, I know they're older now, and they ain't coming back, but if Lennox Lewis or Prime Mike Tyson was to fight any of these guys, they getting scraped. Like, those guys are getting scraped by Lennox Lewis or Mike Tyson. 
Lennox yeah. Lewis is jabbing heavyweights to to sleep. He gonna jab them to sleep. And I don't feel I don't feel boxing is that is is I don't feel that boxing is where where it should be after you know following those guys following those type of fighters. And mm-hmm. I could be wrong. Like I said, I said boxing trash. That's how I feel. If, if you guys feel different, tell me what it look. Tell me what's the next big fight because every big fight they said is is the one. Them junks been trash to me. But them, I think the biggest pay per view fight over the past couple of maybe two three years has been Mayweather versus Conor McGregor, which is sad. It's sad. All right, so now, first of all, LaPaz, we got to say this. If it's any viewers of the show and listeners of the show, if you are a boxing fan, you may or may not see the trend. That's not what we're talking about. To me, when your sport is thriving, it's pulling in casuals. If, if your sport ain't pulling in casuals, your shit ain't popping, okay? I don't know who don't know that. If you're a boxing fan and you watch every boxing fight, you ain't, you're not... You're not the one who can say whether or not your shit is up or down. That, that's when, me. I'm a, I am a football fan. I watch Canadian football, college football, exactly. Division Two, Three football, exactly. NFL football. I'm a, when this new league start with like the AAFL. I'm going to watch. I'm tuning in. I'm a football See, fan. Go Spade. When the reason why people say Tiger Woods was good for golf, word because Go when Tiger was in golf. We was watching that shit. We don't know what's going right. on in golf. We, we was, was tuning in. in. We was locked in. You know what I'm saying? I know I was. When this World Cup, we tune in. We don't know what's going on in World Cup. <laughs> when right. your sport pull in the casuals, your shit is popping. If it ain't do, if it's only pulling pulling in fanatics and the purists of that sport, your shit ain't popping. Now let me I jump back 100%. to something you had. Statman D, hey, at this point, man, I think Statman D probably done. He done no call, no show. He done, he done, he done quit. I got it though. Manny Pacquiao is forty years old, man. Uh, just turned forty in December. Let me go back, cause I saw Lapers like, yo, boxing is trash now. Like boxing is down, and and he was getting a lot of pushback. Folks was hitting him up like, nah, you don't know what you're talking about. But hold up, hold up, my bro might know what he's talking about because you know what I just looked up. I got pay per view numbers. And I can see the trend. I got pay-per-view numbers way back to the 50s because I didn't know they had damn pay-per-view back then. Spit them actual factuals, B. Spit them. Let me give you some numbers. Let me give you some numbers. First of all, Deontay Wilder and the Fury fight, it had 325,000 pay-per-view buys. That's what they mm-hmm. That's what they do it by, buys. Okay. okay, you know, heavyweight ain't what it used to be no more. Other than the Klitschko brothers, I don't even know if they still doing it like that. Wilder, Fury, I can't even name 10 heavyweight boxers. I'm a casual, though. The last time I considered myself like a boxing fan, that's when the middleweight was popping. That's when Winky Wright and, you know what I'm saying, uh, Roy Jones was out there. I, yeah. In that era. I've been gone for a minute. Okay, but let me give you some numbers. I got right here. Manny Pacquiao and Adrian Brown fight pulled in 400,000 pay-per-view buys. Mm-hmm. Fury Wilder, 325,000 buys. Now, let's go mm-hmm. back. I'm going to tell you when your shit was popping. Canelo Alvarez, Triple G, 1.1 million buys. That's popping. Mm-hmm. All right? Canal, uh, Canelo Alvarez and Triple G first fight, 1.3 million. Mm. Floyd and Connor. Floyd mm. Mayweather, Connor McGregor. 4.3 million buys. Dude. That's popping. 4.3 million mean folks that ain't ever watched a boxing right. match in their life I'm, tuned I'm in for that to shit. Tell you. I'm That's to tell popping. You. And when the pass of your shit down. In June 17th of 2017, Andre Ward, that's a guy who can fight. Andre Ward fought. I don't know how to say buddy name. I don't know how to say this dude's name. Andre Ward won the fight. Pay-per-view buys, 130,000 pay-per-view buys. And I, and I love War. I think War I think War can scrap. And that's what I'm saying. 130,000, bro. You know what you get with Floyd. That's why that's why they got to pay Floyd a billion damn near billion dollars to fight cuz they know what they getting. They know but what But let they me getting. do this. Let me do this, Lopez. Let me go back cuz somebody going to be like, "Oh, it always trend like that." Let me go back. Let's go back to like 2013. Floyd versus Canelo. 2.2. Floyd mm-hmm. versus Robert Guerrero, a million. Manny versus one Manuel Marquez, 1.1. 1. 1. Mm. Who we got right here? Floyd versus Cotto, 1.5. Manny, 1.4. 1. 
Floyd versus Victor Ortiz, 1.2. Manny versus Sugar Shane, 1.3. Manny versus Antonio Margarito, 1.3. And dog, on, Oscar man. Fall Floyd in 2007 got 2.4 million, dog. Come on, man. You telling me 300,000 and 400,000? Come on, man. Man. Come on, man. <laughs> Ricardo Mayorga fought De La Hoya and got 925000 The numbers is down, fellas. The numbers is down. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm still seeing low stuff. James Tony versus Evander Holyfield only 150000 Them guys was washed when they fought. They was washed. Them guys was washed, man. I'm, I'm boxing, this, babe. Boxing's always going to trend up and down. But if you're not grabbing casuals, your shit ain't popping. Simple as that. Uh, and I'm going to say this. Uh, my opinion right now the state of boxing and believe me i used to watch a lot of them fight like back in the day that, that like i said in my i hate to be that guy but like in my day those fights was people used to be locked to the tv for these big fights when they happen now not so much and i know somebody gonna say somebody gonna say oh well it's a lot of illegal streaming happening spade and that's you fair technology me, is definitely that, that is fair. some of the streams that's Th fair that is 100 percent fair spade but you cannot say that technology wasn't happening when Floyd just fought McGregor. Come on. Oh, yeah. Floyd, Floyd just fought Mag McGregor and had 4 million bars. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on. In 2017. The internet was I, alive I, and well. And I'm going I'm to be, be honest. I ain't going to speak for nobody else on this podcast. I watched Floyd and McGregor illegally on stream. I did. On an illegal stream. I did not buy it. I but, would not self-incriminate. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. They can't say, oh... They, they, that, that's not an excuse because I'm telling you, people still watch a lot of these fights uh, on 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 you know illegal streams, and the number still was great for Floyd. <laughs> so nobody watched Floyd and Pacquiao and all these just on on illegal streams. They did. I'm telling you, my opinion now, boxing is is it's terrible. It's terrible, and they be reaching and they be reaching for all these gimmicks. And like I said, if if y'all telling me I'm not watching, tell me where to look, please. I'm. I'm Please tell me where to look. I love a good fight. Like I said, I love, I think Ward is that dude. I think Ward is that dude. But I'm not, I'm not locking in to go see him fight somebody I don't think is, is comp. That's another thing too. People, I'm not saying Ward duck fights, but a lot of these guys duck, duck fights. They were saying that, uh, I think his name is Joshua. Joshua was, they either said Joshua was ducking Wilder. Wilder was ducking Joshua. I Anthony don't remember Joshua? how it went. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't remember how it went down, but they saying one of them is ducking the other. So, I'm just saying, fights used to happen, man. And like I said, I used to be a big MMA fan, UFC fan, but that jump turned to WWE too. What's but wrong you know, with fighting? You know what's crazy, though? Go I'm ahead, looking man. at their big events. They ain't got a big event with a buy rate under a million. And they don't even make the money boxers make. Mm-hmm. The, the UFC shit, man, I went all the way back to December 27, 2008. They don't have one under a million. Mm. You know, it, it is it is definitely fair to say that technology takes some of the some of the, the packing power out of this shit because so three, it does. So, Spade, you will believe that 300, three, 3 million people watch that joint illegally on stream. Hell no. Hell no. Nah. Man, that's the, because that's just look, a big number, man. I don't yeah, think if, people if is Florida as got, interested as they think. If Floyd got 4.3 million buys versus Connor, and I know Cats was out there sharing the hell out of that illegal link, Word. that shit was floating all up and down my damn timeline. Word. That tells Word. you just how much people bought it. All I'm saying Word. is this. Because boxing fans are going to be in the comment section. Y'all going to get all hot Good. and I just want to say them, this. Cause I, teach me. With, Listen, I, 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 I'm, I'm not saying I'm a boxing aficionado, Spade. That ain't what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm well, not I, drawn I'm to what... I am. I know, bro. If Tyson was to fight tomorrow, bro, I'm I'm locking in. I'm locking in. Oh no, I'm locking in. I don't want to see this, Tyson. I'm off that. I mean, my I, thing I, is this: listen. with Floyd Go gone, your to me being the casual, your biggest fights involve Alvarez and Triple G, mm -hmm. and they probably involve them fighting each other. And I know that has happened, but. Let's say you take, let's say you take Jesse Vargas and let him fight Canelo Alvarez. I, I'm good. I ain't got to tune into that because I know Canelo finna win that. I already know that. You know what I'm saying? Th this Sergey dude that that fought Andre Ward, if he finna fight Triple G, I don't really feel like I got to tune in for that. I don't know. It depends on how they build it. But 
your, your big names are Canelo Alvarez and Triple G. And if those guys can't put you in the millions, man, Triple G just fought in 2017 with 170,000 buys. Mm. He just fought. I don't mm. know, man. I don't know. Hey, if you a boxing aficionado, please leave your thought. We spent a lot, 21 minutes and counting on, on this topic. I didn't even want to talk this shit. That was Me good. neither. Not this long, but I'm just saying. I, that's how I feel. Boxing is down, Spade. Boxing is down. I want AB to... I, I kind of want AB to retire. Like, I'm tired of this guy. I'm tired He's of He's super him. young. He ain't even 30. I know. I want him to stop trying to be funny. Stop cracking jokes. And, 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 and Spade, and it really annoyed me when he was the dude. The dude just doing his job, like, oh, you three, three, and one in your last seven fights. He like, oh, I'll be seven and zero against y'all. And I, my whole Twitter, everybody on Twitter thought that was hilarious. Not me, cause you you want to beat you want to beat up a regular dude. How about you beat up a? How about you beat up Pacquiao? He a boxer. You a boxer? Yeah, I, beat up a boxer. Cause I got bad news for you. Your pay per view buy is gonna be even lower if you fight him. You know what I'm saying? They already low. They gonna be even lower. If you fight, yeah, dude. come on, man! No, like, you want to beat up a regular dude that's that's commentating, that's that's yeah. analyzing the fight. Why you want to beat that guy up? Beat up yeah, a boxer, bro. Yeah, it's like an NBA player saying that I'm better than you. Yeah, you supposed to be. Be better yeah. than other guys in the NBA, though. That's what yeah. it, that's what'll make you great. Not being better than me. Let's get off of boxing, man. Boxing, please, big right now, please. Uh, let's go to the NFL. Matter of fact, let's talk about some of these playoff games from the past week. The past, it was two really good games last week. Right. But neither game came without controversy. Neither game. And, and if I'm talking controversy, I got to go to the Saints-Rams game. I don't know what to think about that game. Y'all know I'm not a Falcon fan. Born and raised in Georgia. My dad is a diehard Falcon fan. And Falcon fans are bred to hate Saints and Saints fans. I saw a lot of people I know, some family members, tweeting like, yeah, get the Saints up out of here. Get the ass up out of here. And I, I couldn't help but feel like, wow, I don't like the Saints, but the Saints got hosed. It was a couple. It was a couple of bad calls both ways, both for and against the Saints. I'll be the first to admit. But it really seemed like the officials chose to swallow the whistle on passing plays. I saw very aggressive DB play from the Rams, not just on their most egregious call. I saw it earlier in the game as well, but at some rate, it seemed like it was decided upon that you could be really physical with receivers and you wouldn't draw a pass interference flag. And the Rams used this to their advantage. They noticed it, I'm assuming, and one of the most egregious missed calls in the history of playoff football happened, resulting in the Saints having to settle for three in a drive that it looked like they could have pretty easily gotten into the end zone. A defensive P.I. would have made that first and 10 from inside the 10, and it, nothing's guaranteed. They still could have got stopped, but it just was a very bad feeling seeing it. LaParis, I know you saw the game. Yeah. Um, is it a big deal? Did that bad call lose the Saints the game, in your opinion? You can't say. Mm. You know what? I'm, mm. I'm, I'm a, yes, yes. I just, mm. hey, that you you gotta make that call, bro. And it was, like I said, it's football, so it's always you can say, oh, it's holding here, it's pass interference here. Oh, this is offensive pass interference. Oh, this is uh, defensive holding. This is offensive holding. Oh, the wide receiver pushed off. You can do this in damn near every play. You can do this damn near every. If you want to be that guy, you can look at every play and be like, oh, it's some illegal shit that happened. But come on, bro. You cannot. The wide receiver going up the sideline, bro. The DB didn't turn his head around, look for the ball. If the DB would have turned around, he probably would have had a pick. He probably would have had a pick. At least but he just ran flat into the wide receiver before the ball even got there and hit helmet to helmet. Sure did. I mean, so if it ain't, if you don't want to call uh, passing defenders, it wasn't no helmet to helmet right there. We have seen helmet to helmet um, calls for less, for less, for less. Now, you don't know if, you don't necessarily know if the, if the Saints was going to score a touchdown there or if they was going to win that game, but that call changed that game. That call changed that game. That call did it. And 
you know, the NFL actually came out. If I'm not mistaken, he was either to this morning or yesterday. And they find, I think his name was Roby Coleman. Coleman, I think, I think that's the uh, DB name. They actually find him for a helmet to helmet hit. And he, the corner even came out and said that was pass interference. I'm glad they didn't call it. Like, come on, come on. Spade, the refs have been terrible all year. And it's continuing in the playoffs. And these are supposed to be the best of the best. These ain't like no regular officials. These is the best of the best. Like, it, 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 the refs have been bad all year. But Jesus Christ, this call right here is, is, is pretty. Aside from, like, the tuck rule and maybe, like, two or three other calls, this is up there as, like, top five worst nine calls ever. Like, this is it's terrible. It was terrible. It was terrible. Felt bad. It felt really bad. Uh, I do get the people saying you can't win or lose a game on one call. I've said that myself. It's kind of tough to say that in this game. But there are some things, if you want to argue the other way, you could. You can honestly say that Jared Goff outplayed Drew Brees. You can honestly say that for the first time in a very long time, somebody slowed down the running attack of the Saints. I mean, 15 yards rushing for Kamara, 31 yards rushing for Ingram. And let me let me. The Rams me definitely say this played well. I don't want to say like the, the Rams didn't play well and they was gifted the game. They played well, but that one missed call was very egregious, and I I, I hate to admit it, but I felt bad for the Saints, bro. I want to say this too. I, uh, Sean Payton had a lot of questionable calls. It, it was at the goal line one time. He put it. Now I know that's what they've been doing all year, but they took the ball out of Drew Brees' hand. They put Taysom Taysom Hill in there. And they ran some crazy funky. And I'm like, bro, just play some football. At some point, you just gotta line up and play football and stop yeah. with the gimmicks and the gadgets. Like I get it. You was yeah. doing it all year. Like it wasn't just that play. It was numerous plays. Uh. Sean Payton called, and I was like, what is Sean Payton doing? Now, y'all know I picked the Saints to go to the Super Bowl, but, I mean, I ain't had no dog in that. I mean, for pick em game purposes, I was rooting for the Saints, but I ain't had no dog in that fight. I just wanted to see a good game. Right. And I, I'm looking at Sean Payton, like, some of the calls that he was calling, bro, I did not like at all. And I'm going to talk about another coach when we talk about the other game, some of the calls he was calling. But Sean Payton, I, I'm, looking at Sean, I'm looking at Sean Payton, and I'm wondering, like, damn, I hate to say it, but did he get out coached? Did he get out coached? Because some of the plays he was calling, I, I did not like at all, bro. I didn't like him at all. So let me ask you. I seen on my timeline that Drew Brees is watched. Do you feel Brees is watched? The, the past couple of games, since the Dallas game, Drew Brees has been kind of a shell of himself. I think I think I read something like maybe seven or eight touchdowns to like seven or eight or nine interceptions. Do you, I think Breeze is about to turn 40. If he's not 40 already, he might have just turned 40. He may be 40 years old. Do you think he's watched? 40 year old Drew Breeze? Uh, no, I, I don't. I see a lot of folks saying, well, he can't really put that zip on the ball like he had been. And you know, I'm looking at his last few games. Look like he's been zipping that shit to me. Put up 201 <laughs> versus Tampa, 203 versus Carolina, 326 versus Pittsburgh. 301 versus Philadelphia and 249 last week against the Rams. So, he, I, I don't think he's playing bad. I will say this. Look, man, the Rams' defense is really good, especially up front. Uh, you got Aaron Donald, who is Aaron Donald. Yeah. You got in Donald, you too, that seemed like in the postseason, he I don't know if up. he was just saving it up, but he turned it up. He and turned it man, up, bro. I saw somebody on my timeline. Drew Brees dropped back the pass at some point. He got ready to step into a pass, which quarterbacks do. Pressure got there. He got hit as he was throwing it. It turned into a duck. It was an interception. And yep. somebody on my timeline tweeted, oh, Drew Brees sold. I was like, how you sell? He got blasted on that play. Like, <laughs> he did. He got clobbered. I don't know. I'm telling you, man. I got to start staying away from sports Twitter because y'all just be tweeting to be damn tweeting. They somebody do, like, man. oh, Drew Brees, terrible. He sold. I would love to see you deliver a straight pass. Getting blasted by one of these damn guys. I think it was Dante Fowler that came off that edge. I don't know who it was, but I, I don't think he's watched. I really don't. I think as the year went on, I'm going to tell you what happens in the postseason for those that don't know the past. I know you know this, but I'm going to tell you what happened in the postseason. Coaches and offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators, they get a little bit longer to steady their opposition. You know what I'm saying? They make, they make game plans to stop things that teams like to do 
And I, I think we saw a little bit of that. And I, I don't feel like Drew Brees has looked terrible in any of these games. But, you know, he, he, you know, tapered off a little bit. But I'm looking at this season, man. 3,900 yards passing, 32 TDs and five picks. I'm not going to say that guy's watched. Not at all. Drew, Drew Brees is going to be just fine. He'll be back with the Saints. And they'll be, they'll be in the hunt again. I mean, it just sucks. Because this two years in a row that the Saints done really took it on the chin. Yes, they, bro. They, That's what they I'm saying. They lost to Minnesota on some... Crazy ish, and, yeah. And now they lost again. I mean, they done took it on the chin twice. That's that's tough to come back for. But I think Drew Brees will be back. I do. And, Spade, and I want Le Paris, go, I, go ahead. Look, Drew Brees probably want to hang him up, but you yeah. can't walk away on Word. the two playoff exits he's had in the last Word. two years. They had Word. the game in the bag two years in a row and got it Word. took out of their hands. If I'm Drew, I can't walk away on that. I can't. I, I think he'll be back. Fred, I want to I take it to the New England Patriots versus Kansas City Chiefs game. We know the game was Let's played in Kansas City. Turned out to be a, a hell of a game, and it was a controversial call in that. Tom Brady drops back the pass, throws an interception, flag on the play, Spade. You guys didn't know what the call was. D4 lined up off size. I'm going to say allegedly because it was a lot of reports after the game. I was like, yo, we've never seen a definitive angle. Of D4 lining up offside. Spade, I got to get your thoughts on that. It was almost over. I mean, that interception, in my opinion, is the game. It is the game. It, it is does. the game. It does. Because then look like it would have been a pick six. Spade, I got to get your thoughts. The evil empire almost, almost went down. But it was a controversial call. Again, surrounding the New England Patriots. Again, seemed like it's something with the Patriots every single year. Spade, I mean, was he offside? Did he line up offside? That damn man was lined up offsides, man. And I want to I wanna have a conversation with this guy. Bro, I ain't played organized football since I was 13 or 14 years old. And, bro, we was taught when you, when you come to the line of scrimmage, you look down the line and you make sure that you ain't breaking the plane of the football. You make sure you are behind. You look at everybody else. If you see a teammate lined off, you say something to him. And I know in the heat of the moment, you compete and things are going through your head. Hey, man, let me tell you something. As a Dolphin fan, bro, this shit hurt it. This shit hurt it, <laughs> me, bro. When I saw that pick, I was like, yes! Brady had already thrown two. Yes! Get they bum ass out of here. Why is it a flag? And they show this guy lined up Whole off helmet size. off size. Whole damn upper torso. <laughs> <laughs> he in the damn Patriots backfield. <laughs> he looked like they tight end facing the wrong way. The hell is he doing? Damn it, man. I'm tired of the Patriots, bro. And you know what? After that game, folks was tweeting me like, Spade, you got to admit, Brady's the GOAT. I'm like, what? He just threw his third pick of the game. That's <laughs> granted, that one right there was a deflection, if I remember correctly. But he just threw his third pick of the game. How is he the GOAT? You know who should have got credit for that win, LaParis? Sony yeah. Michelle. Sony Michelle was running like police were behind him. This man went off in this game. And I wouldn't hear any Sony Michelle talk after that game. All I was hearing was Tom Brady's the GOAT. And that's part of the reason why I hate these guys. Julian it's crazy because I played think Sony did this. Last week, last week, Sony had like two or three TDs. Like, he went, Sony been toting that thing. Like, Sony healthy has really been the Patriots' best player. A healthy Sony Michelle really been the best player on the Patriots. I'm, I'm saying it. I want to say Edelman played well, too. Tom Brady was throwing them balls. Edelman made a hell of a catch. It was also a over and over, over with Edelman on the kick. Or oh, maybe it was a punt return. Maybe it was punt a punt. Return. It was a punt, and it, they said the ball hit him in the hands. He said it didn't. Spade, I, did the ball touch Edelman? It didn't. As bad as I wanted it to touch him. Trust me, dog. I know they you was, was already your ass off. I seen you. Bro, they was already moving their camera, but I had my CSI kit going, too. I was about <laughs> to dust the man on for the ball. Golly, it didn't touch him, man. Shit. It, it, didn't, it didn't touch him, man. Listen, man. Edelman made 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 some huge catches, bro. He made. I said. I wrote on Twitter. I said, man. Edelman out here playing like he on HG. I mean, my bad. 
you know, you know, he got suspended. But Edelman played a hell of a game, bro. He did. He was he was he catching. Did. He was making some tough catches, like over the middle too. And I yeah. mean, grunt, grunt. One thing I want to say: you can say whatever you want about the Patriots, Belichick. Like Belichick takes a when he when he when he gets the scheming and want to take away your best player. It's it's a Rizzy. So you gotta. This is what my problem with Andy Reid. He runs a lot of these gimmicks and gadgets too, man. But Andy Reid, you know. Everybody knew it. They've been saying it all week. Chiefs, Patriots. Belichick going to take away Tyreek Hill. He ain't about to let Tyreek Hill eat again. Because we know, we sure remember, we remember when Tyreek Tyre Hill killed the Patriots. And also, I'm going to tell you what else, and I know this, this is going to be controversial, and, and he, de- he deserves to be off the team. But Kareem Hunt, Kareem Hunt, I think, would have made a difference in that game. I, even though Damian Williams had a, had a good game, I feel yeah. like Kareem Hunt could, could do a little bit more in the passing game. I didn't feel like Andy Reid called enough passing plays to the back out the backfield. I wanted Me more of that. either. I, I didn't feel like he, he caught. Andy Reid, I feel like he got out coached. You knew they was going to take away Tyreek Hill. Let's, let's, get, let's run some stuff to get Kelsey open. Let's run some stuff to hit the back out of the backfield. Like, come on, man. I mean, Sammy Watkins, who's been in and out of the lineup, he's been injured and, you know, so uh, you know a, a lot this season, but I felt like Sammy Watts, Sammy Watkins was giving it his all, but I I, I don't feel like a- Andy Reid was prepared for what Belichick had. The whole world knew Tyreek Hill was not going to eat this game. He wasn't, except for Andy Reid. Everybody knew but Andy Reid. Maybe well, they knew, but what what do you do? I don't feel like he did enough to get other guys the ball. I don't. I tell you what. As much as I hate the Patriots, man, from time to time they do things that you just have to give them their props for. And I I was watching the game and I was like, God damn it. Chiefs, they finna throw to the running back. Like, that was pissing me oh, off, they, was, come on, they are going to throw to the running back. Chiefs, please, please. And, and they was gashing them. Gashing them. Throwing in the flats, man. Look, eight catches between the two running backs, man. Four for White, four for Burkhead. Spade, but that defense, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, that defense led the league in sacks, but that defense been terrible all year. All they year. They could not get they to could, Brady. Yeah, they, 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 listen, man, they couldn't stop a nosebleed all year. All year. And, I mean, I, 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 hate, I love Eric Berry, but maybe he shouldn't have been out there. He wasn't ready. Maybe. You could tell. I, he didn't look like Eric Berry that we that we know and love. He didn't look like that guy. And I get it. You want to be out there for your team. This say, is a big game. This is a game now the another ball. game. I get it. I get it. But come on, man. Sometimes you being out there hurts your team more than it helps. And I felt like I felt like um, healthy Eric Berry at least swats that ball that went to Grunt. At least swats it. And hey, you know what? Go ahead. He was getting away with a lot of touching too, if we keep yeah. the stack. Because yeah. He was kind of handsy trying to defend Grunk. And I get it. Grunk yeah. 713 and EB is 5'9. I get it. But sheesh. Yeah, I mean, Spade, we're gonna talk we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about the Super Bowl next week. But what did you tell me about the Super Bowl, Spade? What Super Bowl? I'm not watching that shit, bro. <laughs> Spade, the homie Spade. Wanna, is... I don't wanna see the Patriots win another damn Super Bowl, bro. I'm out. Yeah, we'll I'll be gaming on Super Bowl Sunday. Hit me up on my Xbox. You know what I'm talking about? We'll talk about the Super Bowl next week. The Super Bowl that Spade ain't watching. We, we're going to attempt to talk it, even though Spade ain't going to look at it. But Spade, ain't no 2019 Super Bowl as far as I'm concerned. Let's talk <laughs> NBA, LaPaz. Let's get it. Here's some <laughs> NBA news, man. And unfortunately, the news I want to hit you with is right here before the All-Star break, which coincidentally is right here before trade deadline. The injury bug kind of came out, man. And yeah, man. We saw Oladipo go down with a non-contact injury. It's crazy. When I saw Depot's injury, he really could have injured somebody else on that injury because when he went down, he kind of fell on the back of the legs of a player that was jumping and made him come down awkwardly. We could have saw two injuries in one. Uh, Kimball Walker just had a neck injury that doesn't look like it'll be too serious. I hope not. AD is out of the lineup. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie's got a little small injury, and also Rende Hollis Jefferson had some blood gushing out of his face. LaParis, my question to you 
It's a lot of teams right there in that mix. Some teams that might be a player away from solidifying that postseason run. Or maybe it's just a team that's doing pretty good right now that just got bit by the injury bug in one way, shape, form, or fashion. The Pacers was the hottest team in the East for a while. How do you see these teams getting by during this injury period? Is it going to derail these teams, or do you see an opportunity for somebody else to step up? I want to say this. I want to say AD being hurt, I think the if the public is not used to AD being hurt yet, come on. I mean, you it's... Listen, now I know it's, it's, it's rumors that AD may miss a week, two weeks, three weeks. We don't know. AD said he may play next week. We don't know. I think he got a finger. I think it's his finger. But Depot being out, man, that hurts. And not just because not just because what Depot brings offensively. Defense defends. All the Depot defends the other team's best player, man. Oh, he's a hell of a defender. He's a hell of a defender. Now, Get, do do the do the Pacers have somebody that can step out step up? I actually think they do. They got a guy that's coming off the bench right now that I think could fill in right where Depot left off. Maybe not defensively, but I think he can at least give them the scoring that that Depot gave them. And but that hurts the Pacers bench. And I'm talking about Tyreek Evans. Tyreek Evans, you know, he's a known guy in this league. I think he's respected by his peers. I think they when Tyreek Hill was in Memphis. I mean, he was he was he had the little injury bug too. It seems like people go to Memphis and they just they just get hurt in Memphis. So he got the hell up out of Memphis. But Tyreek, mm -hmm. um, Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Evans been coming off the bench for the Pacers all year. I think he can slide into where Depot was at. Like I said, you're gonna yeah. lose defensively what Depot gave you because Depot is amazing defensively. But I think Tyreek Hill can give you what Depot uh, gave the Pacers offensively. But you do lose that off the bench. Whoa, 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 Depot whoa, whoa, going down, whoa, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. You Go said ahead. he can give him what Depot was given? Offensively. He can't give him what Depot was given offensively. He can step Bro, in. Bro, yes, he can. I think he... What, what Depot averaging? Uh, let me see. Yeah, let's look. I, I think he could give him that. I think he could give him that. Tyreek Hill was eating in Memphis last year. Depot I keep saying Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Evans, I'm sorry. Yeah, Depot averaging 19, yeah, five times and six goals. You don't goals. think Evans could give him 19? I do. I do. I don't know. 19, Spade? I think he could give him 19. Go look at, uh, you, you, go look and see what Evans was giving Memphis last year. Evans was hooping. Evans was hooping last year. You know, and he was really only the guy because uh, Conley was out. Mark Gasol was in and out of the lineup. It was him and Jermichael Green. I, yeah, I think he, Evans could give scored, not give him nineteen or close to. He's, he scored nineteen a game last last season. Yeah, but yeah. I think it was a situation where it was like him or nobody. Like wasn't Conley hurt last last? Yeah, season? Conley was hurt. Uh, Gasol was in and out of the lineup, but I f I feel like I feel like he's in a better situation now because he really don't got to do as much. He really don't got to do as much. I think he could give him nineteen. He might I think try. he can. I think he can. But like I said, you're gonna miss out defensively. You're gonna miss out defensively. Spay, like I said, I'm used to AD being hurt. Hopefully, AD come back and still, you know, he's going to be amazing. Uh, you, you mentioned Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie being out hurts the Nets. The Nets, to me, are a surprise team in the Absolutely. league. Absolutely. They are a surprise team in the league. The Nets look, uh, listen, man, and I, I said this, I said this about the Nets a few, a few, maybe like uh, last year or the year before last. I was like, man, the Nets, the Nets, you know, they be in a lot of, they lose, but they be in a lot of games. Same thing I said with Philly when they had Ish Smith. I'm like, man, they they scrap. And I feel like the Nets is in that same situation. I read a tweet, Spade, and then I'm going to let you go. I read a tweet on the internet that was like, yo, the Brooklyn Nets was a part of one of the worst trades in NBA history when they traded for Garnett, Paul Pierce, those guys from Boston, and gave Boston all them first-round picks. Boston still got Brooklyn first-round picks, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody going to correct yeah. me in the comment section if I I'm I think they I'm do. Wrong. They still got Boston uh, I mean, they still got the uh, Nets first round picks, and then they, that person said, "I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. It was one of these beat writers." They said the Nets was a part of one of the worst trades, and they still in better shape than the Knicks. Still, mm. and it's true. The Nets, the Knicks true. got ten wins, I think. They got ten wins. The the Nets, they are a very scrappy team, but Dinwiddie being out definitely, definitely hurts the Nets because he was giving them. St st 
he was giving them starter money off the bench. Like he was giving sure them starter money was. off sure the bench. Was. You know what's more impressive? I'm not gonna say more, but you know what's equally as impressive about Brooklyn? What's that? Man, Brooklyn, like, first of all, nobody saw them being this good. That's one. Two, I did. Two, the Bears. Two of their best players was was gone. Two of their best players was gone. Yeah, Alan Crown been hurt. Flipping. And let's not forget, Karis LeVert yeah. had a big injury. Oh, we thought it was gonna be worse than it actually was. And we was he like, was hooping oh, too, Spade. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. So they might end up having a problem at some point similar to what Boston going through now. When everybody comes back and is healthy, they're going to have to figure that thing out. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's something – let me go back to the Pacers. It's something about this Pacer lineup that I like. I, I went to an Orlando Magic game when the Pacers were in town, and I watched that game. And I came away from that game being super impressed at – and now I'm going to have a brain fart. What's my boy from Georgia Tech? That is young. That is that young. That I, young. I could not believe that that young, that young been in the league. I know 11, 12 years. Dumb long. And he, who'd have thought he would still be providing this type of productivity? Like he, he's a, a productive guy on that team. In the game I watched, Depot was out. They got a really good boost from Tyreek Evans. But Bob Donovich went crazy in that game I watched. He had bro, 21 got, in the first half in the bit, game bro. I watched. People they got some players, Sabonis. bro. People are talking Sabonis might be up there for six men of the year with Rose. Sabonis been hooping off the bench, too. Sabonis hooping off the bench. Look, I, I like this team. They got Dougie McBuckets off the bench. You know, he be, you know, you don't never know when he's going to He off and on, game. but, I mean, if he catch fire, it can be. If he catch fire, he's that guy. Miles Turner didn't really turn into what we thought he was going to turn into, but he's still a very, very serviceable big. You could dump it down to. I like the toughness of Kyle O'Quinn off the bat. I like this Pacer team. And as much as I like Depot, I think of the teams that's that's kind of on that, I, I, I don't think they're going to miss much of a beat. Now, I happen to think Depot can do some things with the Rock Reek can't do. Man, Tyreek Evans was a rookie of the year. Am I right? Yeah. Tyreek can who? I'm not trying to say Tyreek can't hoop. But I just, I don't know. When I watch Depot play, Depot seems like he can get to that cup whenever he want to. And Reek got a little slightly different game. That don't mean he can't put it in the in the cup, but slightly different game. It's, it's unfortunate at any rate because you're looking at a team like the Pacers, who they're currently second in the East. At one mm-hmm. point, it was first in the East. And you're thinking, wow, like nobody, nobody had put the Pacers to represent the East. And it makes you wonder. I just hope I hope it don't derail what they got going on. I don't give a shit about the Pacers. They were a fun team to watch. And I, I like the feel good story of those guys getting it done over there with you know with Big Daddy Brian up out there. Cause you know, Brian take his bet off and whoop everybody in the East. <laughs> he uh, I, I don't think it's a big time issue for um Kimber. I think Kimber will be back. Kimber is slated to be a starter in the All Star game. Yeah. That's that's big. But uh like you said, man, Dinwiddie gives these guys a spark off the bench. And that offense, they got something going right now with these point guards. They're getting great play from D'Lo. He's looking like an all-star. Dinwiddie's looking like an all-star. And without him coming off the bench, it makes you wonder. I think he's out, it said, at least the end of February, maybe early March for Dinwiddie. And it just makes you wonder how these teams are going to keep it going in their absence. I, I, I hate to be that guy, but let me speak on the next for for a minute, real quick, it, and it's it goes a lot with 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 that that ju- um that group of guys and the coaching. I wanna I wanna say kudos to the coaching because some days, some games, Dilo don't be having it going, and 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 I think his name is Atkins. Atkins will sit his ass on the bench, and it'll be Dinwiddie, it'll be Napier, it'll be. Uh, Dem- Demari Carroll, it'll be like another group, a whole another group of guys. And not once do you hear D'Lo say, oh, I want to be in the game or I'm I'm this team star. Like, he don't bring that type of energy. Like, I, they won a game, I think it was either yesterday or the day before yesterday. And, they, and um, Russell had a, uh, De- D'Angelo Russell had a good game. And he said, man, listen, I can't do what I do without these guys, man. They make my job easy. And I know. I know somebody's going to say, well, that's what he posed to say. But I, I actually, when he said it, I believed him. He was like, some games, it won't be me. Some days, it'll be Carroll, or it'll be Spencer, or it'll be um, the center, Allen. He was like, it can be 
it, a numerous, it could be a number of guys, any game, and that's what a team is all about, and I felt that. And I just want to say, I, I, Spade, I hope the Nets make the playoffs. I do. I hope they make wow. the playoffs. Hey, is it going to be play. enough to get you to root for the home team? Nah. Nah, I'm still, I'm still a Bulls fan. We struggling. I already know we trash. I don't even want to talk about the Bulls. We're going to talk about the Bulls in the next segment because they bust the trade. But, yeah. Uh, but, no. This, this coach you're talking about, Kenny Atkins. Is it Atkins? Is Atkinson? I think it's Atkinson. I think it's Atkins. No, it's Atkinson. Okay. This, <laughs> what this guy right here, <laughs> man, he come from Coach Budenholzer, man. Yeah. He was on the Budenholzer staff. And if yeah. you think about it for a while, man, Budenholzer had that same logic with the Hawks. The Hawks that have uh, guaranteed this is our guy. Like, some nights – it would be Al Horford. Some nights right. it would be Paul Millsap. Some nights it would be Schroeder. Some nights it would be, t- you know what I'm saying? You never know who was going to be that guy. Yeah, it could be Baysmore, anybody, man. I yeah. think I think he was around for that team that the Hawks had, like, four guys in the damn All-Star game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so, yeah, was. man, uh, it's it's a part of that that coaching tree, and it, it's definitely helping the Nets. It's rare. I mean, look what I'm Coach real hard doing on with coaches, the Bucks. Bro. Look what Hell he's doing yeah. with the Bucks. So I'm hard on coaches, bro. Like, if I don't see you making some changes, to me, I feel like that's all the players. These guys know how to play. They can go out there and hoop. Word. But this is the type of shit right here that make you say, oh, that's coaching. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's players, too. But now I can see the value of this guy right here. Yeah, I agree. You ready to move on? Yeah, man. Yes, sir. Spade, like I said, we're going to talk about trades. It's a lot of... Spade, I like trade rumors. I, you know, even NFL football, I like trade rumors. I do. I like them. Oh, Spade... The Chicago Bulls bust the trade for Melo about six years too late. Like it was, it's really been about six, seven years too late. But we did end up trading for Melo. We're not, we're not gonna play Melo. We're not gonna play him. We, we're gonna probably try and trade Melo again or either wave him or like whatever. But Spade, it's some other rumors. It seems like Memphis is finally off the Gasol and Conley is the team wave, and they, they look like they on the block. It looked like Dennis Smith Jr. He's been having some... It, ever since Luca been in Dallas, something has been up with Dennis Smith Jr. I don't know what's going on. It was a whole report came out that he was away from the team and they didn't want him to come back to the team. Now it looks like Dennis Smith Jr. is on the block. It's reported a few teams are interested in him, like Phoenix and... um. I read it. It was Phoenix and it was somebody else interested in him. Uh, AD seemed like he always on the block. Like, it's all, you know, AD to the Lakers. We keep hearing that. So we're gonna talk about that. It looks like the Knicks are putting Courtney Lee and Hardaway Jr. on the on the Blizzy. And Spade, of course, you know, and this one right here, I talked about Melo already, Spade, but this one right here is funny to your boy. Because when I was telling this team not to not to bust this move, everybody was like, Oh, you're crazy, you don't know basketball in Paris. But it looked like the Washington Wizards is putting Otto Porter on the block. Spade. Do you see one? Do you see any of these guys moving? And if so, which one would shock you? Which one would shock me? It shock. would shock me for somebody to bust a move on Mike Conley. And okay. that's not because Mike Conley is not a good player, man. But Mike Conley was just, let's not forget, right before the Cavaliers read up Brian that last time, Mike Conley was the highest paid player in the NBA. I hope I can pull his contract up while I'm talking. I wish Mike we had Conley a stat act, man in Mike Conley actually shot something terrible last night. He might have shot like four twenty last night. He played terrible. Man, played he terrible. can have a he can have a bad day here and there, man. Damn, I, I need to know his contract. Can you look that up for I me? Got I know he's thirty one years old. I know he on a big ass contract, and I don't know how many years is left on it. And I need to know that before I sign to him. But right now, I can't see anybody busting a move on a thirty plus year old point guard with a big ass price tag with a history of injuries. And it's almost comical. It's funny to come out and be like, you know what? We want to get in this trade talk. We're willing to Mike, move Mike cut Conley. You off, babe. Mike Conley yeah. signed a five-year, $152 million contract. And he's in what year? Three? This is year three. Okay. Yep. So those next two years, they over 20 a year, right? Got to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hold on. I'm about to get that. Here go right here. Yeah, this yeah, is I year three that. right here, 2018, 2018, 2019. He's making $30 million this year. And then next year, he's going to make $32 million. And then in twenty in the year 2020, 2021, he's going to make $34 million, babe. Good God. 
31 years old. Mark Gasol is 33 years old. His contract probably ain't that out of hand, but I think he's on a pretty big contract too. So Memphis saying that they're going to entertain offers for these guys. What? I, I don't know. The only thing I can fathom is when you hear the Lakers say, we're willing to move our young core for a superstar. Maybe Memphis is hoping that Brian going to look over there and say, I need one of these guys. I don't see it being either one of these guys. I mean, I know Rondo's not healthy right now. Hell, Lonzo ain't healthy right now. But I don't know that Mike Conley's the answer over either oh, one of those guys. I don't think, I definitely don't think when when it was said about that, I don't think it was talking about the, I could be wrong, but I don't think they talking about these guys. I think they talking about AD. <laughs> you think they, you don't think they talking about AD? I mean, I don't think the Bills <laughs> They, they better not be talking about in, Gasol or Conley. They better not. I'm just I'm saying that if you the Grizz, when you hear that, maybe you think, okay, I, we'll put our superstars out there. Shit. Maybe we can get some young pieces. I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, Bro, <laughs> Damn it. If the, is the If the Grizz thought that, then they worse off than I thought. They better not think they even, no way, no spade. If Bro. the Grizz thought that, they need to move back to Vancouver. Move them back to Vancouver right now. Bro, don't, they, they, don't do them like that, bro. Spade, do no like way that. they thought that. So you it's telling possible. me that, that you you telling me the Lakers came out, they said this, oh, we'll trade our young talent for a star. And the Grizz was like, you know what? Let's make the call. Uh Gasol and Conley is on the block. Bust a I'm move, not LA. They made a call to LA. They just said, hey, LA looking for some veterans. They looking for some stars. We got a couple of them. If the office right, we'll bust a move. It's very dangerous to do this though. Because once you be like, I'm taking calls on this guy, that guy instantly goes, Oh, y'all don't want me round here? Y'all don't want me around here? I felt like if you was going to bust a move on Gasol, you should have did it when you had to make a tough choice between Mark Gasol and, and David Fisdale. That's right. That's when you should have went with David Fisdale because, honestly, Gasol don't look like he hit no more. Gasol is scoring 15 a game. How many rebounds? He's Bro, keep nine rebounds. And 15 and points. Nine and he's rebounds, not defending 33 like years he old. used to, bro. He's not defending like he used old. to. So, it ain't looking like... I, I don't know how many more miles they thought they was going to get out of Mark Gasol. That looked like that ain't really popping off. I don't know what's going on with Fizdale in New York, but him and these DMPs... He gonna, to, they going to figure it out, Spade. Porzingis out. We, they, he gonna, I believe now, I'm he's scared a good, they going to fire this man, coach. bro. I, Go ahead, me too. Again. But I'm, I'm scared they're going to fire this man, dog. I'm oh, scared well, they're going to well, fire I mean, that's, that's typical Nick fashion. So, if that happens... I mean, I, I'd be happy for him because he he gonna land on his feet because I believe he's an excellent coach. And if they give that's, it time, that's their problem with these teams. They they be like, oh, it's not working out first season. Get up out of here. Like, give him time. He don't got poor Zingas. I think he'll be all right. I think he'll be all right. I, mean, I think he'll be all right. But but you so right. That's this. what the Knicks do, Spade. They might fire this guy. You right. The the move that I don't see happening. I say it kindly, but it wasn't fair to just point out kindly. I'd be shocked if Conley or Gasol find a new home. I, I okay. don't think that it's it's not gonna be easy. That's not an easy sale. You're gonna have to like throw in a pizza and a convertible or some shit like that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I give you Mike Conley. I ain't talking about no Papa John's either. I'm talking about pizza that people actually like. Like, I, and I'm not gonna say a brand for the free. You know, say a pizza company to your boy up. I say your name, but it ain't gonna work. But we give you Mike Conley. You know, uh, uh, extra large. You know, meat lovers pizza or some shit. And like a convertible Porsche. You know what I'm saying? Like a Porsche 911 or some shit like that. I don't see nobody taking either one of these guys. The move that I think could happen, the move that I expect to possibly happen is Dennis Smith Jr. Um, let's, let's be honest here. Luca is the runaway rookie of the year. Runaway rookie of the year. Uh, he is probably the future. It's a shame that they don't feel like these two guys can coexist, but they mm -hmm. clearly don't feel like they can coexist. Something I kind of feel bad for DSJ. It's a business. I get it, man. And I, when folks was mad with LeBron years ago, and I'm going to rant for a minute, LePere, so, you know, if Go you want to take a sip of some H2O or whatever, this is a good time. I was real critical of the Cleveland Cavalier fan base because when LeBron wanted to leave in free agency, everybody was like, oh, he turned his back on. And I'm like, look, man. Teams draft people all the time and change their mind on people. And your right. ass would be out in the cold. These teams don't give a shit. It's a business. 
Brian got drafted there, gave them fools seven years of his life, took him to the finals, and wanted to go elsewhere. I don't see a problem with it. Now, you look at DSJ, who just got drafted lottery by this team last year, was celebrated, had one of the most exciting plays of the season last year where he got a steal. He hit the ball to get it. Yeah, I think it went over a defender's head. He caught it, bounced it off the floor, caught it off the bounce, and dunked it. Mass fans was going crazy. You get Luka this year, and all of a sudden, you don't, you know, you get a new toy, and then you don't like your old toy no more. Now they don't like DSJ. He's not really good off the ball. You didn't draft him to be off, off the ball. He was never drafted to be off the ball. So you drafted him for one thing. You feel like Luka's here. They can't coexist. DSJ is young. DSJ right. is talented. And somebody going to bust a move on DSJ. So that's the deal I expect to see happen. I, as far as Otto Porter, I, me, I won't say never because I don't think Otto's a bad player. I just think his player price tag ratio is a little skewed. You know what I'm saying? I think I would I would spend a little bit less. I, I would wait till the market came down on Otto. DSJ going to bust a move, though. I would be shocked if DSJ stays with Dallas. I would be shocked. I, I think I think Smith Jr. is going as well, Spade. I don't, I, I don't see anybody busting a move for Gasol and Conley. I could be wrong. Nope. You're I, not. I don't see anybody busting a move um, for Otto Porter. I, I, I told the Wizards, like, they don't listen to, they don't listen to strong arms. I told to the, the Wizards. We do the show to- for free, LaPaz. I know. I know. I told the Wizards, don't pay Otto. And everybody said, I don't know basketball. I said, yep. you can get the same thing, if not more, from Kelly Oubre Jr. Yep. That you get from Otto. And everybody was like, nah, you wrong, blah, blah, blah. Kelly Oubre out there in Phoenix hooping, by the way. Kelly Oubre out there hooping. The Phoenix Suns still still suck. But Oubre out there eating. Listen, I don't, I don't see nobody taking Otto money. Now, I could be wrong. This is the NBA. And it's always a team that's like, yo, we a auto porter defender corner three knocking down dude away, and they could maybe somebody will bust a move. Mello, yep. it's reports that the Bulls are either going to try and trade Mello or wave Mello. I can see Mello. It's been reports that Brian want Mello. I don't know how that's going to work. They got a, they got a, it, it won't. They got a slew of those guys. They got, I mean, Ingram shoot, <laughs> uh, Kuzma shoot, uh, Zoop Zoop back when he get the ball he shoot. I mean, they got guys out there that shoot. Michael Beasley, Josh he Hart shoot when he get in. Don't Joe, worry about uh, Josh Hart. Josh Hart shoot. I forgot about Hart. Livingston shoot. Like, ah, bro. Mello is, Mello, they call Mello the ball stopper. So, Mello going to shoot. So, Bron said he would take Mello out there. If anybody can fix Mello, I would assume it's Bron. So, we'll see. Hardaway, Hardaway Jr. and Lee. I think the, I think the, Lee, you can get Lee out of there. You can get Lee out of there. If I'm not mistaken, I think Lee is on an expiring contract. Lee can go. He don't even play anyway. So if you want a 3 and D guy, somebody can bust a move for Lee. But Hardaway Jr., if they, I, I think that's the bad, I think that's a bad move. If you trade Hardaway Jr., I don't like that move for the Knicks. I feel like the Knicks, you, like I said, I feel like Fizz, they're going to get it worked out up, up there. But like I said, this is the Knicks, and they do some funky shit up there all the time. They'll fire Fizdale and get rid of the whole damn team, and it just be Porzingis, and that it. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about the Knicks, man. AD is what I want to do to talk about, Spade, because it's reports that maybe the Ain't Lakers... Ain't no rumors they, for him, B. Huh? Ain't no rumors for him. Spade, it's been rumors. It's been rumors that the Lakers saying this was to kind of lure the Pelicans to be like, okay, they putting everybody up on the blood. Like, maybe this might be the time. Maybe a- instead of AD just bouncing, maybe we can get some of these young guys. I, so, I was in the party with the homies, Spade. This is why I love our podcast. I was in the party with the homies, and the homies was like, bruh, just get a Pelicans, Ingram, and Lonzo for AD. And I'm like, that's not enough. If you're doing any tra- if you're the Pelicans, and you're doing a trade with the Lakers, and you don't get Kuzma, then you tripping. You better get Kuzma back. So then they was like, oh, the homies was like, Spade, they was like, well, they got Randall, they got Miritic, they got Etwan Moore, they got Jaleel Okafor. And I'm like, so what? I want Kuzma back if I'm trading AD unless I just let him walk. Because, Spade, is, is Brandon Ingram and Lonzo enough for you to trade AD to the Lakers? Hell no. Hell no. Thank you. Well, wait, 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 wait. Go ahead. If I know, like, if AD, which I don't think this is I happening. mean, we don't never know. Paul George just stayed in OKC when they was like, oh, Paul George is That's out That's what here. I'm saying. If AD comes to me and says, 
hey, I'm out. Like, I rock with y'all. Some good cuisine down here in New Orleans. But I'm, I'm done with this shit. I'm out. Okay. You know, then... I, let me, I, I are you like, saying he... But the parents, you saying he... But wait. Wait a minute, Spade. You saying he comes to the organization. What if you ask him and he gives you nothing? He says, don't say nothing. I, I don't want to talk about it right now. What if he do that? Because that's... I don't think he's going to come to them and be like, yo, I want to rock with y'all. I don't think any player does that. Nah, Especially I don't think nah, Any that prominent that player that's like an elite superstar... I don't think they'd be like, yo, I'll stay. Yeah, that's how they that, that would never happen. Okay. I, my thing is this. He's a free agent at the end of the year. I feel like if they, they probe, you know what I'm saying? If, if they had any type of feeling that this man was out, I think they, I think they at least say we are taking calls. They haven't even said they're taking calls. So what this tells me is, they either feel like they got a chance or they know they about to throw a mean please stay with us party for this guy before he dip. Hey, it, it worked for Paul George. And I mean, he's going to get the super max if he stay with them. He's probably going to get like $200, $250 yeah. million dollars if he stay home. Yeah, but something tell me, and I don't know AD from the man in the moon, but something tell me it ain't just money for AD. Okay. Like, they're going to have to go to this dude with a plan. Like, Here's what we are going to do to make us the team. We're going to build around you. We're looking to draft this. And they're going to have to make him an active part of that plan. Who do you want us to go after? What can we, like, they're going to have to do that. And if they feel like they can do that and keep him, then you don't take crumbs. But if you really feel like, I think they, they believe they can keep him, bro. Because if they thought they was losing this dude, man, in the reports we just read, it would have said, Pels, we'll at least entertain calls for Anthony Davis. They ain't saying nothing. I, I want to say, say this too, Spade. And I, I, I've been critical of this guy on this show mad times, and you you kind of be on me. But I don't think I don't think they coach Gentry. I think his name is Gentry. Alvin Gentry. Yeah. I don't yeah. think he's the guy, bro. I don't think he's the guy. Now, I don't uh, know which coach, who's the guy, but I don't think he's the guy. I don't. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I think I, I could be wrong because they in the West. I think the Pelicans should be better than what they are. Uh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't think I mean, he's the guy, bro. Uh, <laughs> Yo, give me something, Spade. Give me something. I, I don't de- think he's I the guy, bro. I want to defend him, bro. I want to defend him. According to what I'm looking at, their current starting five is A.D. Miritic. I- I'm cool with both of those. Etwan Moore, Drew Holiday, and Tim Frazier. What, Dude, well, it's, has, go it, ahead. It's, it's Alfred Payton, but I think he's hurt. Okay. Alfred Payton is down there. In the West, I don't know if this is good enough. I don't know if that's good enough. I don't know if it's good enough of a roster. Like, then again, man, we just got through talking about what they're doing in Brooklyn. I know they're in the East, but still, I don't know. Man, you might be right. I, I, I just that's don't how know I if they're I good feel, enough. I think... I think with Peyton, AD, Nico, you got you forgot about Julius Randle. He comes off the bench. Spade, yeah, I, think I was they just got, talking about their stars. Yeah, I got you. I, I I think I think they got. I'm not saying they about to win a championship. I'm just saying I think they should be better than what they are. That's how I feel. AD is a superstar. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I don't know. I, I just got. I I don't think Gentry's the guy. That's how I feel. If you're a Pelican fan, I don't know if they do. The Pelicans got any fans? Maybe D Coop, but who else? D Coop, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Like, if you're a Pelican fan, you 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 a fan of our show, you watch our show. Leave it in the comment section down below. Do you guys feel Gentry is is the answer? Cause I don't. And also leave your thoughts on the trade rumors: Gasol, Conley, Dennis Smith Jr., AD. Well, he ain't really surrounding any rumors yet, but we just speculating. Lee and Hardaway Jr., Melo, and Otto Porter. Spade, we can move on. Bro. You ready? Uh, yeah, I want to move on, but one question before we do. Go ahead. And, and look, I don't know. So if I'm wrong, tell me. Can't do no better than Etwan Moore at the, at the starting three. Bro, I've been, bro. I can't sp- do no better than that. Spade, we've been doing this show for a long time. Rewind to any show when we talked about the Pelicans, and I said, I like Etwan Moore. He should not be a starter in the league. They need a wing. They need a wing. Darius Miller. They need a wing, bro. 
Man, Darius Miller, a six eight sniper. I rather him play Darius Miller. And, and, and it, uh, I'm gonna tell you why, Spade. It he annoys must be a defensive me. Defensive liability. It annoys me because they, the the D League, G League, whatever it's called now, it is a one stop shop. It got this type type of stuff down there. You look at what Miami do. Miami will go pull anybody out the G League and be like, yo, let's let's see what this guy got. They yep. need a wing. And I like each one more is a good defender. Like he played with the Bulls. Like each one more. He a three and D guy. He could defend and he can knock down the three. But each one more ain't scaring nobody. You, I, I would have loved to see the seeing a guy like Covington there, Covington, or uh, yeah, or a guy, like a, a Covington or bro. Let me. I'm trying to think of somebody else fresh off the top. Covington just came to my mind, but I'm like, I, they I need a, a Wilson, wing. Chandler right there. Oh yeah, come on. Yeah man. Come on man. Yeah. We can move forward. I just try to figure that damn thing out, man, because that thing had me a little confused. It had me a little confused. Yeah, I, I think the, I've been saying they need a wing for the longest, and and now I'm saying they need a wing and a coach. Stop it. You I'm know what else confuses me, bro? Let's move forward. You know what else confused the hell out of me, bro? What's that? The Phoenix Suns. Let's talk Phoenix Suns, man. Do we? Do we Phoenix have to? fans. I know we got at least two fans to watch this show. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Vision, shout out Negro. Them young guys be stressed out rooting for this team. <laughs> I want to talk about the Suns, man. The Suns only have 11 wins on the season. They're currently on a seven-game losing streak. And I, I'm not even trolling when I say this. I seriously want to take a look at this team and ask you what you think they need. What are they lacking? They got Devin Booker, who's... A great player. He's going to be an even better player, I think. I, I like I agree. Him. I agree. They got TJ Warren. I like TJ Warren. TJ Warren and Wilson Chandler to me. I like those guys because they they can get you a bucket. Mm-hmm. Let's take it a step further, bro. They got Aiton, who was the number one pick in the draft. He's kind of had some injury issues here and there. He might currently still be out. They was recently playing Bender, which was comical to the Paris, but it was. They got Bridges in there at the four. They got Melton in there at the one. But if you look at their bench, they got Jamal Crawford, who I know Jamal Crawford's older. But Jamal Crawford can come out with that second unit. He can get you a bucket. He's also a guy that I feel like he he been around. He's he's a journeyman. If you look at it, he's played for at least six teams. He can take these young guys, spit some knowledge to them. He's been around the league. He's been around the game of basketball. He's respected in the league. He was respected in the street, in the pro-am circuits. Great knowledge got to have around. You got Kelly Oubre, who LaParis and I, we are fans of Kelly Oubre. I'm a Kelly, Kelly fan. I hang, I hang with Kelly Oubre. He type of dude I would kick it with. Boy. Kelly Oubre can knock down the three. He'll play some defense. He got a little bit of dirt up on his fingernails. If you need right. that, I feel like every team need that guy on the team that ain't scared to scrap, who will go out there and get a hard foul because the team need one, right. spark that flame within the team. They got Ryan Anderson who can't guard a, a cone, but he's a shooter. <laughs> he can't guard nobody, LaPaz. He can't oh, guard I know. nobody. But I know. He, he'll shoot it's terrible. Bro, why can't this team get – what do they need, bro? Right, I'm, I'm going to tell you the problem. Like, I'm, I'm actually – they got the Josh Jackson. Like, why, yeah. why are they so bad? But I, well, I think the, I think they messed up when they let – they busted the trade for Alfred Payton. Alfred Payton was over there damn near getting triple-doubles every night. I think they need a guy – they got – in my opinion, they have too many guys that does the same thing. All these guys you name are scorers. All of yep. them. They yep. all they all want to score. They got too many guys. Now not not so much Ubre. I mean Ubre been probably dropping close to twenty a game since he been there. But they got a lot of guys that score score the basketball, and they don't have a guy that can get them easy. Like and I felt that's what Alfred Payton was. They don't have a guy that can get them easy bu- baskets, and that's what I felt Alfred Payton was. But for whatever reason, they didn't they didn't re up Alfred Payton. They let him go. He went on down to um, Noya. And he down he down there doing his thing, but they need a guy like it. They, they need a point guard. I feel, and I felt like that was Alfred Payton. They let him go. Now they still trying to find a point guard. That's why they all in the Dennis Smith Jr. But I, Spade, I don't know if Dennis Smith Jr. is the answer for Phoenix. I don't know if he's the answer there, cause Dennis uh, Smith Jr. he shoots the basketball too. But he also, 
He he's ahead. not really he ain't really a shooter like that. He really live off the drive. And okay, so he maybe he's a scorer. Maybe maybe scorer is better. Yeah, he'll score, but okay. he can't really shoot like that. And that's but why I'm, he's struggling. So, but I think that's they need a facilitator, bro. Yeah, I, he is definitely a score first guy. I think, but they you, need you think a, a point guard makes you think a point guard take this team to the next level. Point guard makes them respectable. No, the next level is is not having eleven damn wins at the halfway mark, bro. Like they are bad. It's I, when I say the next level, I don't mean like they finna go do it real grande right now, man. They. <laughs> Other than the Cavaliers, they the second worst team in the league, bro. Yeah. So I'm just talking about, I'm talking about 20, 30 wins on this. I season. think a point, I think a point guard can they, make them respectable. To me, they got too space. much talent to be this bad. I, I could be wrong. It, who the hell is they coach? Is it the coach? Who is, is they up? coach? They fired Watson. Let me look this guy up. Who the hell is Igor Kokoska? I don't know who. I don't know who, who that guy? guy is, bro. Phoenix Suns hire so and so as first European born NBA coach. Listen, I felt I think eight and eight. You need eight and eight. You gotta build around eight and and Booker. Spade, it might be. I I I think Kelly Oubre can be your wing. It might be time to throw in the towel on Warren and these these up. Spade, wow. All these other guys do is score, bro. That's all they do. And they, trust me, they ain't about to. Be, you say what you want about the Warriors. They can outscore you. Denver can outscore you. Denver, damn near, top in the league in rebounding. The Warriors is one of the most efficient teams in basketball. Now, we know they got a, a, a slew of stars, but they're one of the most efficient teams in basketball. Phoenix out there just trying to outscore folks. That's not the move for them. That's not the move. That's not the move. Bro, how the hell you say this dude's name? Who, who the, uh, the coach? It don't matter. Yeah. His name gonna be his name gonna be it. fired in a minute, so it ain't gonna matter. Yep. Wow. How the hell did he get this? Yeah, man. Thing? I, I I don't know. I don't know about. Uh, I don't know. I think you you gotta build around Booker and Aiton. I think they need a point guard. Who they power forward? Bridges. Oh, Bridges. Okay, you just drafted that dude. He a young guy. But I mean, you're averaging eight a game. He ain't doing nothing spectacular. I mean, they probably, I mean, you can watch it. I, I don't watch enough Suns game to know how he's playing. So m- maybe it's a guy that hadn't turned the corner yet. I mean, you look, I'm a Buddy Hill fan. It took Buddy Hill two seasons to turn the corner. Like, if you believe in this guy, put the pieces around him and allow him to get better. I think what I'm more concerned about is the fact that he only averaged 2.9 rebounds a game. Like, they, that might be a problem. Let me look at your stats. That's what I'm saying. What you doing out there? If you got these type of guys and you want to outscore people, you got to rebound. You got to at least get stops. They don't get stops. They be in a few games, and then they just don't get stops at the end of the game because they just try and outscore people. They just try and outscore people. I think Book is amazing. He is, but, bro, they they need more. They need a a PG. I don't know. Let me see what what what, are, what is the Suns' points? What are they averaging point wise for the season? I got you. I got I, you. You talking about yeah? I'm team? pretty sure it's over a hundred. It gotta be probably what a hundred and seven. Uh, I don't know because you know everybody's scoring now. Uh, I'm pretty sure they one of the top teams in the league. Nah, cause this ain't looking good. They twenty fifth. 25th in scoring? Yep. They Sheesh. score 106 a game. Damn, so what the hell is the top of the league? Sheesh. Golden State score 119 a game. Milwaukee Damn. 117. New Orleans actually score 116 a game. Philly score 115. Oklahoma City 114. Toronto. Yeah, the league has changed. Clippers. 107, 106. That used to be like the top of the league. The league has yeah. changed for real. Man, Memphis the lowest team, and they score 100 a game. Damn. And they used to be like one of them slow. They probably got the slowest pace in the league, and they still score 100. That's crazy. Yep. That's crazy. I, yeah, I, 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 I don't have to ask for the, the Phoenix, bro. I feel like bad, they need bro. a point guard still. 
I'll say this, and LaPaz, uh, this is not shade. Listen, this is really not shade. Basketball is one of the few remaining sports where one dominant player can, I'm not going to say he going to get you championships. Like, one person can't get you championships. One dominant player can get you wins, though. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's time to, like, Devin Book is a great player, but he got to turn the corner, man. He got to turn the corner. He's too good of a player for this team to have 11, uh, 11 wins right now. Yeah, remember last year he came out and said, oh, this is our last year not making the playoffs. He, pump, he needed to pump his brakes there because they ain't not making it this year either. Pump the brakes? He need to rip the E-brake. <laughs> yeah. He's averaging 25 a game. T.J. Warren is giving him 18. He's the second leading scorer. You to my pull the plug on T.J. Warren. Fall back. I Eight like TJ, but I, I'm saying I don't feel like that team is the the way it's constructed. I don't think it's the move, bro. Like it ain't Warren fault. I, I ain't saying it's Warren fault. It I'm saying he's an asset but that you can his. move. Somebody got to go. Who gonna go? You saying keep them all and get rid of the coach? That's what you saying? Yeah, get get rid of Igor and get you a damn PG. And listen, sons, I'm gonna keep it a stack with y'all. Let me look in the camera, to pass Phoenix. Mm -hmm. If y'all ain't, if y'all can't at least get 30 plus wins, that's y'all homework assignment. 30 plus wins for next season, <laughs> then you can't talk Phoenix Suns on this show no more. They're not getting 30 wins, bro. They, next season for the whole season? 30, no, bro. They're not getting 30 bro. wins next year. Homework. All right, well. You hear me? Right, They're well, not getting 30 wins next year, bro. I'm well, sorry. Well, then that's a Rizzy for them. Man, this team's with 30 wins already. They not. <laughs> they not. Why they you not. laughing? Because they not. I don't have a draft in front of me, but who was in that Bender draft? Was the Fox in that Bender draft? Oh, no, no. Bender been oh, in the league for like five years. Let me see. I mean, they drafted Bender like four or three or some shit. Man, he'll be back in the damn summer league for the fifth <laughs> year in a row. <laughs> This man, a summer league veteran. I mean, how the hell you a summer league? Veteran? Hey, say what you want about the Kings. The Kings look like they got something, bro. And Fox look like he's the real freaking deal, bro. And who else? Willie Cali Stein look like he the real deal. And Buddy Hill. Buddy Hill look and like he Buddy the real deal. I'm telling you, I like that team out there. And we ain't even really seen. Um, 2016. What's my man name? The one they just drafted this year with the fro. Damn. Oh, uh Bag uh Bagley. Marvin Bagley. Yeah, we ain't even seen Bagley like I mean he Man, played that but... dude, you ain't ever got his name right. Yeah, I don't. I, I mess his name all up. Alright, so they had the fourth pick. So before they took Bender, Ben Simmons went one, Brandon Ingram went two, Jalen Brown went three. They took Bender at four. You know who they could have had? Who they could have had done. Chris Dunn, Buddy Hill, Jamal Murray. Marquise Chris, I don't know about that one. Thumb maker. Oh, they took Chris Sabonis. too, right? Didn't they take Chris? Who took Chris? Well, yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, because they it traded. It was the Kings pick. Yeah, it yeah. was the Kings pick. Yeah, 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 you're right. Sabonis was out there. Torian Prince was out there. They could have got on, Denzel man. Valentine. <laughs> ah. Come on, man. They could. It was a, look, look all them point cards. Karis LeVert. Come oh, on, yeah, man. but I mean. Just talking PGs, man. Dunn and Murray. Murray on, would man. Woo! Murray on that team would be something to watch. Murray that on would that, be something to watch. I, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping out on the limb, and I don't mean them right like right now, but Murray on that team, like they got a backcourt of like Clay and Steph, young Clay and Steph. Booker and Murray? Come on, Hell bro. Yeah, yeah I'm I ain't talking about you. Steph talking and Clay about now because they, they mature to this. All the way. But you remember yeah, I'm them jumping. young. I'm jumping. Come on, man. Yeah, I'm jumping, bro. Bender. They took Bender, y'all. Yeah. I, oh, they, but they did come back in the second round and take Tyler Eulis. Took him. And they let him go. Bro, they let man, him go. Man, you walk. know who else was in this draft that didn't get picked to the second round? Malcolm Brogdon. Come on, man. Who's a, who's a starter for the Bucks right now? That's just, that's just bad. That's that's just bad drafting, man. That's bad drafting. Bender. Let's move forward, man. Phoenix Suns fans, hit me up. Let me know how you guys feel about this segment. What do you guys think you need? 
Do you guys honestly feel like y'all too good to have 11 wins? Like, do the talent on that team, do y'all feel like it's too good of talent to have 11 wins? Or am I tripping? How many Somebody going to say they're tanking. Baby? Tanking for who? How many wins are they going to get this year? 20? Yeah. 20. They're going to get 20. They basically got 10 before the break. I give them another 10 after the break. Maybe no more than 22 wins. Mm. Matter of fact, let, let's let's do that. Over or under 22 wins for the Phoenix Suns? Under. On the season. They're not getting 22 wins. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I say under, too. They're not, under. Getting, they're not getting 22 wins. Because all the other teams for the really start trying now because it's, it's the push for the playoffs. They was just bullshitting at first. Boogie back now. <laughs> it's over. If you couldn't get no more than 11 before the break, it's over. They're not getting 22 wins. They're not getting it. Let's move forward, bro. Let's move on. It's bad. The Pickham game was horrible for us last uh, last week. We both uh, yeah, really? we picked the uh, Rockets Toronto game. It turned out to be a real good game. Yeah, two point game. I mean, a couple people showed up to help Harden, man. Yeah, they did. One being the Manimal. Oh yeah, yeah. Which I will talk about later. <laughs> yeah, but I got a good Pickham game for us this week, and I got. The Milwaukee Bucks at the Oklahoma City Thunder at the Thunder Spade. Who do you have and why? Uh, who at home? Thunder. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's a tough one. You go first. You go first. I think you know what? Time. You know what? Paul George been playing out of his mind. That's what I was thinking. And the Thunder, the Thunder's home. So you got you to gotta really give the, the home team a little bit of an edge. But Milwaukee has been playing great. Milwaukee had a tough game yesterday against the Dallas Mavericks. Dallas was up against Milwaukee. It was up. But the uh, Greek Freak was just too much and brought them boys back. I think this is going to be a, a close game, bro. I'm going to give the Thunder the edge, though. I think the Thunder win in like a five, four or five-point game. It's going to be a five, four or five-point game. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be close, but give me the thunder. Ooh, I don't know how I feel about this. I think I want to go OKC too. And and mine ain't for Paul George. I think Paul George is gonna get his. I think Greek Freak gonna get his. Hmm. But I, I, Russ, Russ, don't do this to me. I'm expecting a Russell Westbrook explosion. I think Russ gonna go off. Okay. Russ, I need you to go off in this game. And I got OKC winning. Okay. Okay, ladies and I, gentlemen. I don't know what's been going on, but on this recent trip, I my pick'em skills been kind of slack, and it got me second guessing myself now. Uh, I don't know yeah, what's going on. yeah. I'm hey, not I, as great as I once was. I mean, it comes with age. I asked Drew Brees. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> I just sit there and told you Drew was all right, and this is what you are gonna do? Hey, uh, let's bring it home in the pick'em game. Bucks and Thunder, bring it home, in the man. conversation down below. Last segment of the show today, LaParis, we call this segment the Strong Arm Performer of the Week. And this is a very prestigious award in podcast land that we give away weekly right. to a male or female athlete who raised his or her level of play to ensure that their team got the victory. LaParis don't really do good on this segment. If you're new to Are the you show, kidding me? What? watch him fumble the bag. Watch him. LaParis, who's your Strong Arm Performer of the Week and why? I'm giving it to a guy that people told me was done. They said this guy's career is over. Brady. I'm like, how can we say his career is over? They don't even play him. Like, we don't know what he has. We don't know what he, what he has left. And he's still young. And they was like, nah, it's a Rizzy. This dude don't have a lift he once had. He can't block shots. He can't defend like he like he used to. I'm like, nah, I believe oh, in him. Oh, God. And I'm talking about Nork's own. Nork, New Jersey's own. Oh, God. Kenneth Faree, the manimal. He went 8 of 11 from the field. He had 21 points and 14 rebounds and two blocks and a big win over the Toronto Raptors to help help lead his Houston Rockets to wow. a victory. And for that reason, Kenneth Reed, you are my strong guard performer of the week. The man of New Jersey zone, Brick City, what up? <laughs> this man found a way to shout out Jersey. I guess I'm good with that. That's a pretty good pick. James Harden. I know you're good with it because he helped out James Harden getting the victory. James had a bad game. He only had 35. You know what I'm saying? That's a bad game for James Harden. But since we giving shout outs to 
Iowa State's. Let's go, let's go holler at that boy from Jout. You are my strong on performer Whoa, of the you week. Got, bro, how you claiming Florida and Georgia? I mean, the wise philosopher Tupac once said, I get a round. Round and round. Round we go. Oh my I get around, man. Don't worry about me. Worry about yourself. Hey, look, man. Let's go out to... Who was home? Chicago? I don't know who was home. Let's go to L.A. Let's talk Clippers. And let's talk that man, Lou Will. Oh my Mr. Two Girls on his side. Lou Will came off the bench. Had a 30-point triple-double for the win out there. Guess what he had, y'all? 31 points. 10 rebounds. 10 assists. 1 steal. 1 block. He's the first player to get a 30-point triple-double off the bench since Detlef Shrimp. You remember Detlef Shrimp? I do. Detlef Shrimp was that dude. He was. That's he back was when the them EuroLeague players the used to, Them EuroLeague players all used to look like Drago from Rocky back then. Right. Like, it was like a requirement. Like, right. if you was coming to the league, you had to get the Drago. Had to. Lou Will, for that performance, bro, I keep looking at this team over there, and I'm like, damn, the club was all right. We thought this was a rebuilding year for the Clippers. They let everybody go. No CP3, no Blake, no DJ. And they said, cool, give us a little bit of Pat Bell. You know, we'll keep Lou Will, man. Don't forget give about Gallo. Gallo been hooping. Give us some Tobias Harris, yeah. you know. They've been playing well. And Lou Will. Lou Will, you keep balling like that, man. This ain't going to be your last time. But for this one, you are my strong arm performer of the week. GA stand up. It's them red clay boys. DSGBs. Down South Georgia boys. Brrr. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I oh thought I was. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, oh man. Oh, my gosh. I don't know where the hell they came Listen, from. Listen, man. I almost turned the past the Troy right there. Spade, before I close yes. the show, you got anything else to add? Can, I, can it be about Miami? No, and it can't. Listen, I'm just glad it wasn't James Harden, okay? Excuse it can me. be. Shout out my boy James Harden, still getting it done. Don't matter who his teammates are. You can throw him on the court with four mannequins. He's still going to get the dub and get assists. I don't know what you're thinking. How? Mannequins can't shoot. James will find a way to get him to shoot. He had a bad game and had 35 points. That's a bad game for James Harden. We ain't never seen nothing like this in the league. Ever. You ain't never seen this. Go ahead. I want to say this, man. Have you ever seen this? going to clear up. Put on your happy face. The Cowboys fire Leonard hand. Yes! Yes! That's terrible, though. Yes! I hope Listen. y'all be worse without him. Because I, I don't like what you're doing to him. you acting like Baker Mayfield and you're acting like he you. All right. You got, you, <laughs> you got your you. punch off. He's worse. Let him go. He's worse than you. He, you got your punch off. Let him go, Baker. Stop beating a dead horse. Listen, man, we want to thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Strong Arm Sports. We cannot do this show without you guys, but if you new here, if you new here, bang the subscribe button. If you're a regular, hit the like button. It takes two seconds. There's also a little bell up there. You can click that bell. It sends a mobile, it sends a notification to your mobile device to let you know that a new episode of Strong Arm Sports has been uploaded to YouTube. If you don't want to see two dudes arguing in the box, it's okay. We got audio podcasts everywhere. SoundCloud, Podomatic, iTunes, Spotify. We everywhere. Should never miss a show. Facts. Why? Facts. Would, how are you missing a show? You should never miss one. Whatever you use, we that. I'm working on getting us on title. And today, what is it called title? Today, whatever it's called, I'm working on that. I'm pretty sure it's title. I'm working on getting us on that too. Listen, man, we can't thank y'all for your continued support. We'll see you guys next episode. We out. Peace.